So, hello to everyone. Uh, we are uh, Machine Learning Together Milan, and uh, we are doing some lectures about uh, unbalanced classification. We have seen um, the, during the last weeks, we have seen uh, the theoretical part. So today we, we are going to see the associated notebook uh, uh, with the problem. So I hope that uh, you have seen uh, the, the last meetups uh, that you know the problem. Otherwise, uh, uh, for the first part, we have uh, the, the YouTube video, okay? Otherwise, uh, for the first and second part, we also have uh, the slides that uh, I presented during these meetups, okay? You can find, it, find them on, um, on the link uh, uh, pr present in, um, in the uh, meetup page, okay? So, Today we are going to see a notebook uh, for the moment uh, is not uh, on our GitHub uh, repository, but uh, it's uh, on mine. So uh, I will push push it uh, in the f in the next days. But uh, for the moment, uh, I will send you by Zoom the link to my repo. So uh, if you you see the, the chat, you can see the, um, the link to my repo, okay? And, um, okay, so let's, um, let's share my screen. So what, what we will see today, we will see an application, okay? I will present uh, this notebook. And we will see an application of unbalanced classification. Oh. But it's not a, a classical application because uh, each time that you see an example uh, on the web, you, you see uh, the classical methods uh, uh, use... What is the problem? Uh, each time that you see the, um, the uh, notebook on, classi on unbalanced classification problem, you, each time you see that uh, the um, method like, uh, I don't know, um, oh. Hello, Eleonora. I'm still hearing you, don't oh. worry. Okay, so I, I have a problem to, load this notebook i don't what i don't know what is the reason oh okay so i will explain this picture later so we will see in this notebook that uh, um, we will not use uh, no we will use the classical methods uh, like i don't know uh, smooth uh, uh, up sampling, down sampling, uh, threshold selection. But we, we will see a particular, particular example, but uh, I don't want to do some spoilers about. Um, so um, the problem is a classical problem that you can find, uh, uh, as you can see, you know, on, uh, if you click the link in the, in the in the introduction, you can see that, um, a link to the book uh, that is uh, Applied Predictive Modeling. And on this book, uh, you can find the exercise uh, 16.1. Uh, okay, it's uh, a very interesting exercise for the reason that you will see. And um, okay, so what is the, pre uh, the problem? Okay, we are using the US adult census dataset. Okay, we have uh, different rows. Okay, so we have, uh, uh, and it's a, um, a classical census database. So we have uh, some people with uh, uh, some, uh, some features, like, for example, the education level, the type of job, the capital gain and loss, uh, the number of hours worked uh, per, per week, uh, the native country, and other features, okay? And the goal is to predict if the, the person income is large or not. This is the reason for this picture, because uh, it's... Uh, the big Gatsby, okay? I don't know if you know the, the book uh, and so also the, the film too, okay? But it's, uh, it's taking this, this picture from this film. So um, what, is the pro the, what is the fact? The fact is uh, that uh, we have uh, a lot of people with uh, 
uh, a small income, okay, and a lot of and and few people with a large income, okay. It's quite uh, it's quite usual. So uh, as as we will see in this case, the income is not uh, a number, but it's a class. So uh, more than uh, fifty uh, fifty thousand or less than 50,000, okay? So, uh, what I want to do is uh, a first part, okay? Where we will do an exploratory data analysis, uh, okay? And in, in this part, we will understand our data set. In the next part, we will try to build a classifier, okay? Um, the, the first classifier we will build uh, using uh, any technique, okay, uh, for unbalanced data set. Another one we will, uh, the other one we will use uh, um, uh, only the, the change of the threshold, the threshold change, okay. Uh, next, uh, we will see uh, some sampling approaches, okay, and the sensitive and the cost learning approach, okay, as we have seen in the previous meetups, okay. We will, um, and we will do some uh, other considerations. I don't know if we have uh, the, all the time today, but uh, I, I hope that we will see the most of the notebook. Otherwise, uh, we will see the last part in the next meetup. So this uh, notebook is in R, but uh, it is the last notebook in R that I will do because now I will um, create all the future uh, notebook in Python. Okay, but for the moment uh, I'm uh, still using R. But it's not a problem because we have a lot of pictures and a lot of comments, so it's not uh, it's not difficult. Okay, so the first um, the first thing that we we do is to load our dataset. Okay, and we have to understand uh, our columns as usual. This is the first step that we usually do in data science. So we we see our all of our columns, okay, so the age, the work class. So the age, okay, let's see here the different uh, the different features. We have the age of the individual, okay, it's continuous. The work class, so if it's a private, uh, an employee, what type of employee, on the, of employee uh, is not work, is not working. Um, so the employment status of an individual. Uh, this uh, columns column is not important. It's not interesting because uh, it's uh, used by um, for, for the sampling up uh, the sampling approach. So we will not use it. The education level. So if we have a bachelor, some um, some college, uh, some something else. As you can see, we have a, a very uh, precise um, idea. Education number. Also related. Um, also related with the education level, okay? Highest level of education, okay? With a number, and this is a continuous uh, feature. Marital status, in this case, uh, okay, it's quite clear if you are divorced, if, you're, if you are married, uh, something else. The occupation, so what, what do you do? Okay, sales, uh, whatever you want. Relationship, uh, race, uh, what what kind of race? Uh, white, Asian, black, other, wh whatever you want. Sex, uh, capital gain, capital loss. So the capital gain for an individual, capital loss for an individual. Hours per week, so the number of hours that you, you work. That is countering, okay, so now, and the, the last one, the output variable the output feature that is the income so uh, if you if an individual makes more than 50,000 annually okay and, and this is a categorical categorical variable okay so uh, we have a lot of feature okay uh, uh, I know that uh, uh, it's not important to remember all the features but we will see them it, okay uh, so I removed the, the first one that is not interesting Okay, so uh, let's we we have different type of features: the numerical one, the ordinal, and the categorical one. We can have different approaches to to treat them, but uh, uh, what what I used is uh, we will see what what approach I will use. Uh, we have to understand what what are 
what we are doing. So let's see, let's, let's see the percentage of uh, small income and large income. Okay, in this case, the small inc the large income is smaller than the large one. Um, okay, so uh, we are working with an unbalanced classification problem. It's not a very strong unbalanced problem, as you can see, because uh, uh, there are a lot of example, examples where you have a very big uh, unbalanced problem, okay? So I don't want to use uh, this kind of, of, of example because um, the, the, the web is very, there, there are a lot of, uh, of them on, on internet. So it's not interesting from, it's interesting, but not for this meetup. So we are working with a not very severe unbalanced data set, but it's enough to create some troubles. So, uh, we, have, so we have seen the different features. We have seen uh, the, the proportion, different, pro different proportion for the two classes. Let's see the NA. So we see, we see that we have some NA in the income, in the native country, in the occupation, and the war class. So we can um, use different approaches to treat them. Okay, so uh, I want to remove the income because uh, it's the output. Uh, so if we don't have the output, uh, some is maybe not interesting. Okay, some of you can say yes, but we can use the other variables, uh, uh, all, all the no, the other features associated with the um, NA in the income to fill, uh, for example, the other variables or to to do some analysis. Is true. Because so, so in general, when you remove uh, some uh, NA, it's, uh, you, you lose something. But in this case, uh, I don't want to spend too much time uh, to, anal to analyze uh, in, in very, very big detail this data. It is not, uh, uh, we are not working with a real data set. Yeah, yes, it's real, but it's not uh, an industrial problem. In this case, uh, we are only studying uh, uh, how to analyze uh, um, an unbalanced data set. So I will not to go into much detail from uh, details from a theoretical point of view. So in this case, uh, we will remove uh, the, um, the feature, the, the, the all, all the NA for um, pre present in the income variable. So I will remove all the NA when uh, the NA is present in the income variable. And uh, the other one, we will treat the other one in uh, some other way, okay? So um, let's start with uh, some visualiz visualization plots. So let's start with the uh, numerical variables. In this case, we can use the Pearson uh, uh, correlation, but we will not use them. Uh, we will not use it because uh, it's not a very it's not a very good method if you want to capture nonlinear relationships. So we will use a Spearman correlation. Okay. So in this case, you can see our correlation. We and here we have the table. So we will not we will not see a very big correlation between the numerical features. Okay. So they are quite decorrelated. Let's try to see um, some other plots, some other scatter plots. Um, okay, in this case, uh, we plot them. Okay, let, we can see some of the plots. Okay, in this case, uh, as you can see, the capital gain seems uh, very interesting uh, to split. Uh, okay, in this case, we have uh, on uh, X, um, on the x-axis, uh, for example, the age, or education number, the capital gain, and on the y-axis, the other variable. So education number, capital gain against education number. In the color, we have uh, the class. So uh, I, um, I income, the small, large income or small income, okay? So in this case, you can see that the capital gain is quite related. It's quite interesting to uh, separate our two classes because the other one seems to be not very interesting but but this is only uh, a 2d plot so sometimes um, or maybe we will see some other plots that are um, that will give us another result let's see them for example let's see this um, histogram so this uh, this um, yes it's uh, it's an under the wood is an histogram but uh, 
it's plotted as a, a probability distribution, okay? So we, can, we have the probability distribution of the age splitted by income. So as you can see, the age for large income is, uh, um, is on the right. Okay, so as you can see, um, the, the, a, the mean associated with the age for large income is bigger than um, the other one with a small income. And uh, it's pretty, it's, it, it, it makes sense because uh, when you're older, usually you gain, you gain more money. So it's quite, uh, it's quite possible to have uh, this income, okay? So let's do some other plots. Okay, in this case, uh, the for the education, uh, the education, uh, the number of education years. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the more you 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 go on the right, okay, and the more the people, the, the educated people will have a large a larger uh, income. On the contrary, we have a very a lot of people with a small income. Okay, so you you see these two uh, these two um, um, these um, these two part of of our graph, these two pink parts that are related with a small income. So, so we have a lot of um, of people with small uh, small income, but also not a, a very um, very high education okay let's see another thing so we we will do a box plot okay and also in, in this case too we you can say you can see that uh, um, a, a larger income is related with uh, uh, an higher education so uh, um, a bigger number of years of education, okay. Let's move on on the capital gain, the same thing as uh, in the previous uh, scatter plot. As in, in this case too, you can see that uh, a, big cap uh, a big capital gain is associated with a larger income. It makes, it makes sense. For the capital loss, uh, it's quite, uh, we, we don't see a clear pattern. Uh, yes, you, uh, if you gain, more money, you also lost more money, but uh, in this case, not like like in this in this in this case. For the number of years, you can see that uh, sometimes uh, you don't uh, you you work a lot, okay, but you don't have a big um, a, a big income, a large income. As you can see, a lot of people have have. Uh, a, large, a small income, but uh, work, uh, I think, around uh, 40 hours. So it's not a part-time, it's a classical work, a classical job. For the other people, for the people with large income, we don't see the same pattern. Uh, it's quite, uh, yes, we, we see something on, uh, on, 40, on 40 hours per week, but uh, it's not as in the small, uh, for the small income. Okay, so... Um, we have seen cl these classical, uh, these classical um, plots, but I want to show you some other ones that I think are very interesting from my point of view. And uh, in my opinion, uh, data visualization is very interesting to understand the problem. Uh, when you, I don't know if uh, some of you work on data, on data science, but in general, the data visualization part uh, is the first part uh, and uh, it's very important to understand the problem. So we have seen that, uh, for example, we the capital gain uh, seems very interesting. Uh, the education year seems to very interesting, and the the age too seems seems interesting. Uh, so um, we have to see if our um, our classifier will say the same thing, and if not, uh, why? So uh, let's see some other type of plot. For example. We will split the, uh, the number of hours uh, in uh, some groups. Uh, for example, uh, 40, 40 hours, uh, less than 20, less than 40, less than 60, 80, 100, and so on. Okay, so we create these different groups. And uh, uh, we plot, uh, we, we split. 
okay, we have a percentage, okay, of people in each of this group. Okay, so in the yellow, we have the percentage of people with large income, in the pink, uh, the, uh, the other one. And as you can see, uh, if you work uh, around uh, uh, more than uh, 40, but less than 60, it seems that you earn a lot, okay? But uh, after that, it seems that you don't, uh, you don't earn uh, too much. So if you work uh, more than 60 and less than uh, 80, you don't, uh, you don't gain more money than uh, another, another person with, uh, that, is, that is working uh, uh, more than 40 and less than 60. So and, uh, it's the same for uh, less than 100. So it's quite clear. This part is quite clear. Quite clear. And uh, let's do the same thing with the capital gain. So as you can see, uh, it's quite, uh, if you are, it's the same as, as before, if you have a big, uh, we create uh, different groups. So more, less than uh, 1,000, less than 50,000 uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, no, 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 not 50, uh, 5,000. Okay. 20,000, uh, 50,000. And as you can see in this case too, okay, it's quite, uh, it's quite logic that uh, is related with uh, the outcome, okay? Let's see also the, the age. So as you can see, you have uh, an increasing pattern, increasing your age, and a decreasing pattern, pa um, dec decreasing pattern um, after the, after 60 years, this is quite, uh, um, this is quite um, possible because you have your, after 60 years, uh, usually you can have your pension, your pension. So uh, maybe you don't earn the same money uh, as uh, you earn during your, your job. Okay, so uh, you can see this, this thing on this plot. Okay, so let's move on on some, on some other plots. So let's do a, um, another, let's analyze now the different categorical variables. So we have seen now the different uh, uh, numerical variables, okay? We have tried to split them in some groups to, uh, to see some other patterns. So now let's move on on the categorical one. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, some different uh, proportion of, the, of, of gender. We have more male than female in this data set. Let's try to see the income distribution split by male and female. Okay, so in this case, I think it's quite clear that uh, the, the male have uh, um, a, a larger proportion of people with a, a large income. As you can see, I split it them because uh, from the previous plot, we have seen that we have a different proportion. So we cannot mix them uh, on, the same, uh, on the same plot. So due to the different, uh, different distribution of our data, of, uh, of, of the gender, we have to, sp we split them. So in this case, uh, we can we can see that the proportion are comparable in this case. Okay, so you can see that uh, uh, for the the male for the male is uh, easier to have a larger a large income. Okay, so it seems that the the sex seems to be interesting, and uh, in this case too uh, we can see in this case we see small and large income. Okay, so in this case we are uh, putting all the things together in this, uh, we have the number of, of uh, person with a small income, a number of person with a large income, okay? And so we can see that uh, a larger part of the graph is, uh, is, uh, is composed by male, okay? But it's not interesting as before because in this case it's quite, diff it's quite it's more difficult to understand uh, the, the pattern because we are not splitting the male and female. So we have a large part of uh, our data set uh, with male. Okay, so uh, we have seen all these things. Let's see other plots. For example, the education level. 
um, education from the education level, you can see, okay, so how to read this plot. So we have, as before, we have uh, on the rows, uh, the different education level divided by income. And we have uh, the number of person uh, with a um, in yellow with the large income, in pink with small income, okay? As you can see, for example, for example, when you have a bachelor or a master's or a doctorate, it's very easy to have uh, a large income too, okay? Because as you can see, the proportion on the bachelor is quite similar to the, the, the large and the small income is, are quite similar. It's the same for masters. And the doctorate, uh, in this case, we have more people with a large income than uh, people with a small income. On the other case, on the other place, uh, um, if we see the high school grad graduate, we see that a large part of the of the population has a small income. Okay, so it's quite clear from this graph. We see. Let's see. For in this case, for this uh, for the relationship. In this case, we can see that the use band are um, are quite. Uh, I have the same, I've, I've printed the same distribution, okay? So we can continue studying, um, studying these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these visualization plots. So we, you can see a lot of them. You can, uh, if you want, if you are interested in, you can see them on my GitHub page, but now you have the, you got the idea. So let's continue with uh, the, uh, the machine learning part the, uh, that I think that uh, you are interest, more interested in this part. So, as I said before, uh, when you work in, in, before in the previous meetups, uh, what you do at the beginning is to create three data set. Okay, you, are, you have your, your first one, your first data set, you create a, a training set where you estimate uh, hyperparameters, uh, you tune your models, and you do your model selection, okay? So, and so, uh, why we have to create uh, another another data set? If you remind from the previous meetups, uh, we use them to uh, select the probability cutoff, okay? Or maybe sometimes you can be interested in some other post-processing techniques. But for the moment in this uh, notebook, uh, we will uh, use this small evaluation set uh, to estimate the probability cutoff. And the uh, last, last uh, set is the test set, as usual, to estimate uh, the test error. So uh, here in this code, you can see what I decide to do. For example, I split, uh, I use uh, um, the 70% of my data set for the training and the other parts uh, and uh, the other part is used for the evaluation set and the test set, okay? So you can find here the different uh, distribution. What I uh, see, what I want to see in this part is that uh, I want to, I want to have the same distribution for each set. So if I use the train set, I want I, I have this original proportion proportion of the two classes, okay? But I want the same proportion, the same uh, of the of the trainings uh, of the original data set, uh, both in the training, the evaluation, and the testing set. So we have in all these sets the same distribution of our uh, data set. We do, a, as usual, uh, a dummy transformation for, for our categorical variable, so one not encoding. Uh, in this case, I've uh, used um, the orthogonal polynomials uh, for uh, ordinal variables. Uh, you can, uh, if you're interested in, uh, you can see more details uh, on the link that I, I put uh, on uh, the notebook. It's uh, interesting for the um, ordinal variables because sometimes, uh, uh, it's not a good, uh, you lose some, some information if uh, you use a one not encoding for uh, ordinal variables, okay? So what I've done is, uh, is to, to introduce uh, 
the one-hot encoding, I've uh, removed the, the near zero variance because as you know, for, for some models like uh, logistic regression, uh, to have some uh, predictors with zero, near zero variance uh, is not very good. So you have to remove them. Some uh, with uh, random forest is not a problem, but, but with, uh, with, um, with a logistic regression, yes. And uh, in addition, because uh, we will use uh, a KNN input to uh, predict the NAs in this data set. Okay, so in the, if you use a KNN, the variance, uh, if you remember, with a KNN, you have to uh, standardize your variables. And so if you have a variance near to zero, it can be a problem. Okay, so I've removed all the, all the NA, I've, I've changed it, um, I changed the, the um, the output name, so we have large and small for the output. So um, in this case, uh, what I've created is uh, some uh, summaries uh, function. Okay, so you will see them. In uh, in this case, uh, the four stats are the classical uh, stat statistics for uh, our models, uh, like sensitivity, specificity. Uh, uh, I think the accuracy, something else. And it is for all the models, the, all the classical models, but uh, we have another, uh, another method for, uh, for uh, the, the, the weighted uh, methods, because uh, if you remember, we cannot use, uh, K, uh, for example, the rock, uh, we cannot use the precision recall curve because we cannot use the probability with the weighted uh, weighted loss. So we need uh, we have we have to use the sensitivity specificity to decide our our model. So we will see them uh, uh, later. So in this case, I've I've trained a different model like a random forest, uh, uh, changing the number of uh, of features uh, to input in uh, each of the um, of the trees. Okay, uh, you can see here the rock. I've used the rock, the rock metric. So the AUC of the the rock metric. Uh, why? Because in this case we are not working with a number a very strong unbalanced data set. So we it's not in, it's not important if we use a. Uh, uh, a AUC for the rock or a, a AUC for a precision, um, precision recall curve. In this case, they are quite uh, equivalent. So you can see here the rock. We have, um, we can see the accuracy, but the accuracy, if you remember, is not very interesting for our problem. We can see the sensitivity. Some t we don't have a very, very good sensitivity, but as you can see, it's quite high because uh, we are not working with a, a very um, very weak unbalanced data set, but as you can see, it's quite different from the accuracy. So it's the most important fact because we you have you think that you have a very good result, but this accuracy is related with the unbalanced uh, problem. Uh, so you have to you have to see the trade-off between specificity and sensitivity. In this case, the trade-off can be quite uh, quite well seen on. Uh, on the rock and the AUC of the rock. Okay, we will not we will not study the kappa. Okay, I've trained uh, a linear regression as well uh, and the KNN. Okay, you can see different results for the KNN. In this case, uh, you have, you have some uh, some other results. Uh, the sensitivity um, the sensitivity is quite similar as before. Uh, Okay, you and you can see that we need a, a lot of uh, neighborhood neighbors for um, our algorithm. Okay, so uh, in this case, I've used to I've used our um, evaluation set to decide what model to use. So in this case, uh, I want to plot the result of uh, of the evaluation set on this rock curve. So as you can see, the three methods are quite similar with the rock curve, okay? So we can also use a precision recall curve. In this case, uh, the KNN is not, is not very good, okay? It's, it's not very different from the other methods, but it's not very good. So in this case, I, I maybe you can prefer the random forest and the linear regression, 
what I choose is linear regression because it's is easiest is the easiest method. So and it's linear. So it's uh, in my opinion, it's, it's more interesting from for our problems for our problem. So you can see some other metrics, the sensitivity. As you can see, the random forest has a big, a bigger sensitivity. So and so, so you can do you can do these plots on your notebook if you want to study this, this problem. But in general, as you can see, we we don't have very very big differences, and it is related because the problem is uh, is not very unbalanced. So. Now I want to study the uh, the threshold, so I change, I change. Uh, I want to change the threshold. I want to optimize the threshold using a UDEX UDEX J index, okay, and uh, as and using all, also the close, uh, closest closest the top left the you, the other approach that we have seen we have seen in the, in the previous meetups, okay, so. The best trade-off between uh, sensitivity and specificity is when you use a, tra a threshold of zero dot uh, a threshold of uh, zero dot twenty six, okay. And so, um, as you can see, we don't have a threshold of zero dot five, so it's quite clear that you, we are not working with uh, an, uh, a balanced problem, like for example Titanic. And so, uh, in this case. Uh, According to our problem, uh, we can decide to use a threshold of 0 0.26 or 0 0.24. And as you can see, this threshold is quite related with the proportion of uh, large income. And it's quite uh, general because if you have, uh, for example, if you're working with uh, a, a Titanic data set, in this case, you have uh, um, 0 0.5 uh, for the... Um, for surviving people, 0 0.5 for not survived. And you have, um, so you have the same proportion of the classes because you are, you are working with a, a balanced problem. And you also use a threshold 0 0.5. In this case, you, are, you have a proportion of 0 0.25 against 0 0.75. And uh, in fact, you also use something similar in the threshold. And it makes sense according to what we, we, we said in the first meetup. So, <coughs> sorry. Um, in this case, uh, we started with uh, a specificity of 0 0.92 and losing only 9% okay, of uh, the specificity, we gain 25% of sensitivity. So changing the threshold and changing so and losing a little bit uh, of uh, specificity, we can have a big uh, increase, a big gain in the sensitivity, so the threshold can be, in this case, as you will see, as you will see, will be the best solution of our problem. And so, this is the reason why uh, I choose this problem because, in this case, the sampling methods, as we, as you will see, will not be the the best solution. Only the threshold selection will be the solution of this problem. So. Uh, let's move on. Okay, I have a problem here. Okay, in this case, we use uh, down sampling approach now for the sampling method, up sampling and smooth. So I've used it, uh, I've trained all these models. Okay, let's see the sensitivity. Hello, honey. This time uh, we are recording the meetup, so no problems. And we are seeing the result for the sampling uh, uh, approaches for the logistic re linear regression. So as you can see, the classical regression has uh, a sensitivity of 0 0.5. The other methods have a bigger sensitivity, but uh, a smaller specificity. And it makes sense, OK? The accuracy for the uh, simple uh, linear regression method is the higher one, the, and uh, is higher than the other one? Sorry. Um, okay, and the rock, but in general, the rock uh, is quite uh, similar, so we don't have very, very, very big improvement. Uh, okay, and so this is what I want to uh, to say you um, some minutes ago. That in, in general, in this case, uh, using uh, a sampling method uh, will not 
give you a very big change in the rock uh, metric. So it's only, um, we, as you can understand, uh, changing the threshold will be enough because if the rock is similar, the point is that you only, uh, only can change the threshold to obtain different results. So let's see the precision recall curve. As you can see, we don't have, uh, in this case, two very big differences. No, we don't have differences. OK. And then for this last part, uh, we will try to uh, uh, see the results for the uh, weighted loss. OK. So uh, let's train a weighted uh, algorithm, so using uh, some weights on the on the loss. And uh, in this case, what, what you can see is, OK, let's change the cost okay, for, uh, for an error. So we increase the cost on the x-axis. And let's see the, how we change the sensitivity, the, sensitivity, the sensitivity and how it changes the specificity. OK, so if you increase the cost, it makes sense that you increase the specificity because you have uh, you're putting a, a bigger weight on, uh, on the first, uh, on the positive class, so the large, the large income, and uh, a smallest weight on the, on, the, um, on the second class, so the small income. And it's the op opposite, uh, as usual, it's the op opposite for the sensitivity. So you can also plot the sensitivity, sensitivity against specificity, and you can see seeing, uh, for example, uh, uh, the difference uh, that you can see uh, where is the best trade-off, OK, as usual uh, with this kind of plot, seeing uh, uh, where you were losing a little bit about sensitivity, you obtain a big gain in specificity. In this case, I think, is here is, uh, is around the specificity, uh, specificity around 0 0.75, uh, something like that. OK, but we will see it uh, in our model. So in the end, the best model is uh, uh, with, uh, equal, uh, okay, with a cost equal to 4. Because if we arrive here, uh, using uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.75 is around 4 exactly. So this is the best, uh, the best trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. And uh, OK, you can uh, select uh, this kind of uh, model. But uh, as you can see, we don't have very, very big results because we have uh, 0 0.75 for uh, uh, no, sorry. Yes, no, 0 0.75 for specific specificity and uh, 0 0.85 for specificity. We have. I don't remember if I compared the two models. OK, 0 0.83, 0 0.77. And for the other plot, uh, this was uh, uh, 0 0.78. No, in this case, uh, they are pretty similar. In, in, we don't see very, very big differences. Uh, OK. Yes, we don't, it's not, they are not very different. And uh, be, because uh, in, in general, the, in this case, uh, I can suppose that the, the threshold uh, to, to, to decrease the threshold is something like uh, uh, put uh, a bigger weight on the, on the um, large income class so it's they are not they don't differ because the the meaning the theoretical meaning is quite similar from my point of view so it's uh, it's uh, it's quite um, it's quite logical that uh, the results are not very different let's see uh, we can see a robust um, we can do a robustness analysis to see if we have if we have uh, some differences so in this case we know the true income, okay? We know the true the true income, so we can split uh, our um, evaluation set in small income, large income, and we also want to see 
what are the, prob the estimated probability for each sample. So we have the probability of uh, a certain income and the uh, associated real income. So in this case, you see the large income and the small one. And you can see the different uh, uh, histograms for this kind of analysis. And uh, okay, in this case, we have a simple logistic regression, weighted logistic regression, small tail logistic regression. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the, the large income for a simple logistic regression has a problem because as, as you can see, you, you are not, um, you're not seeing a very big, um, so what, you, what you hope is to see a curve skewed on the right, because you want that, uh, you want to be pretty sure about the, probab about the probability to have a large income. So you want to have a big probability to, so you, are, you want to be very sure about that. It's like in this other case, uh, for example, when you are in the small income class, uh, if you have a probability around zero to have a large class, uh, a large income, you are pretty sure that you have a small income. So you are the same for the large income. So you want to have a big probability to have uh, a large income. But as you, as you can see, the distribution is quite uniform. Where with your weighted the logistic regression is, some, is uh, something better because as you can see, the distribution is uh, changing, uh, is a uh, center of mass, okay? The mass, uh, I think it's mass center, I don't remember. So as you can see, this, mod, this method is learning something because uh, is putting most of the events uh, with a large probability. So this method is more robust than the, the, the uh, of than this one and this other one, because as you can see, also for the smooth logistic regression, we don't we have a pretty uniform distribution for the estimated probability. So this is to see to say you that as you can see, the smooth is sometimes is not the better the best solution. Sometimes you can do something better with a weighted logistic regression or only changing the threshold of your classical method. We can also see uh, this feature importance plot, but uh, what uh, I will resume you. Uh, the, f the, the point is that uh, all what we have seen uh, in the data visualization uh, agree with uh, this, this feature important plot. You can see it uh, um, uh, after the, this meetup, you can see that the, the results agree, okay? And we can also do a test set evaluation for the weighted method. In this case, as you can see, the, the, the same analysis that we, have seen, that we have seen before is done here. And as you can see, the, result, the results are pretty similar. So as you can see, we are working with a pretty robust method. Okay, so uh, the last part, we can, uh, we can plot the, we can, uh, um, compute the sensitivity, the specificity for the test set, and they are pretty similar to our evaluation set. So we have a very robust method. So the conclusion of uh, this meetup uh, and uh, this study is uh, that, okay, uh, the, um, the smooth, um, the upsampling, downsampling, these methods are quite useful in general, but sometimes uh, they are not the best method. So you can, you have to sometimes to, to see if the, if changing the threshold can be useful to have a, a better model. So this is uh, the idea that, uh, from today. And so this is enough for, um, for me. So if you have some question for, uh, for, um, for this notebook, uh, it's your time. I, I see a question from uh, Aldo. Okay, if you have uh, more than 10%, you have to analyze NA uh, in general, yes. But in general, it's very important to analyze uh, your NA, okay, you, when you're working with a, a real data set, because sometimes maybe uh, you have only 
maybe one percent of NAs in your data set, but, may, but maybe sometimes this NA is relating with something. Maybe there is a pattern in this NA. So um, it's very important uh, to understand uh, what are you doing with uh, what are the meaning of this NA. So, but I not uh, in this meetup. I don't want to analyze them because it's not the goal of this meetup. But in general, it's very important. Uh, for the second question, can you upload the part two on YouTube? Uh, we had a problem because uh, we are not recording the, the meetup, but no problem because uh, all I said is on our GitHub repo. So you can find the slides on the GitHub repo and they are pretty uh, well explained. So I wrote, uh, um, I wrote, uh, everything that I said in the meetup. So you can uh, find um, the slides on the GitHub, GitHub repo of the, of the group. So no problems, uh, no problem at all. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why we are not recording this meetup, but it's not a very big problem. So, okay. And uh, have you any other questions? But now you are recording this, this uh, meetup. Yes, 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 yeah. absolutely. So for me, it's enough. If you don't have other questions or other curiosities, uh, suggestions, uh, what, whatever you want. Otherwise, uh, we stop here. For the project that you want to do, any news? Well, what project? You talk about some project uh, some days ago, remember? Uh, uh, the project associated with uh, uh, unsupervised time series? No, no, another kind. Uh, ah, yes, okay, yeah, talk, yes, 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 okay, yeah. uh, yes, 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 now, now I remember. Um, yes, no, uh, we have to organize it for the moment because, but before we will do the, um, we will, um, uh, we will, uh, sorry, I'm quite, quite tired. Um, we will do, some, uh, two, I think, uh, two meetups uh, on uh, unsupervised uh, time, uh, some time series uh, classification with uh, Andrea Megaro. And it's a very interesting topic Perfect. because uh, it's, uh, it's a research topic and it's, uh, it's, um, it's, um, it's master thesis. So it's a very, very interesting topic. After that, we will organize uh, since uh, I think April or May, a new branch of machine learning together Milan, mm -hmm. where we will study together uh, not only machine learning but also um, some some field related with business analytics. So how to use uh, maybe Tableau, Power BI, something like that. And uh, mm -hmm. how, so we will try to use this uh, this approach. Okay. Also some project uh, on NPL. Talk about something. Whatever, it's uh, very open to everyone. Uh, if you have some ideas, uh, it's very open to everyone. If you want to organize it uh, with Giovanna, it's uh, it's very interesting. I think it's not very easy or time consuming, and uh, but I think it's a very good opportunity to work uh, on uh, uh, some problems uh, for your portfolio. Of course. Okay, another question from Aldo. Uh, what basis you have classified? Um, no basis because uh, it's done. Uh, it's uh, it done. It's uh, created by the author of this data set, so you cannot find. You you don't see the income. You only see the class. Okay, so you and you only know that the class is created with uh, uh, the fact that the income is more than fifty. Um, thousand uh, or less than 50,000. Okay. So there are no very, I don't know the, the real reason, but uh, I think it's something related with the census. Okay. Other questions? For me, it's okay. Okay. So if it's clear or if you have some, uh, if it's not clear or you have some other questions, uh, you can write, uh, you can, you can um, write on the meetup 
event or you can join uh, our Telegram group and ask uh, whatever you want. Uh, if you have some ideas, some feedback, if you, for example, if you want to, if you expect something else, if you want to learn something else, you can uh, propose some ideas or you can propose uh, whatever you want from uh, these meetups. And uh, uh, yes, I think it's possible that uh, I'm based. And um, okay. So guys, uh, have a nice evening and bye-bye. Thank you to join us today. Bye everyone. Thank you, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye guys. Uh, okay, so. Uh, wait a minute. Ba -ba.